page 113, in the middle, Psalm 29, Mismor le David. Come to Lechado Di, the uh, great wedding song that introduces Shabbat. Um, this is just a moment of sweetness and a moment of light. And as I began by saying, when we come into Shabbat and say, I'm giving up on fear, that is also to an extent what a wedding and a marriage are about. That what you say to the person you love is, I'm giving up on fear. I'm giving up on my fear that this won't work. I'm giving up on my fear that you'll break my heart. I'm giving up on my fear that I won't be with you for the rest of my life. I'm giving up on fear and I'm giving in to hope. I'm giving in to love. And so if that's the theme of a wedding between two human beings, then once again, that's also the theme between Israel and God. I'm giving up on my fear of being alone and I'm giving up on my fear of what's outside and I'm giving in to my hope and I'm holding it up this Shabbat. And so L'Chad Odi begins on page 115, a song of love, a song of hope, and a gentle reminder to go with this song of love and hope that you may be tempted to sit down at the end of that last verse. <laughs> Please do not. We are actively attempting to stand up to keep the energy going, to keep the music going. So stay, stay up with me, and let's dance at this wedding. Page 115. Let's 
Page 119, Baruch
Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Bidvaro Ma'ari Varavim Bechokma Poteach She'arim Uvitvuna Meshane Itim Uma Khalif Et Hazmanim Umesader Et HaKochavim Bemishmerotehem Berakia Kirtsono Boreyom Velayla Golel Or Mipne Choshech Vechoshech Mipne Or Uma Vir Yom Uve Layla Mavdil bein yom uvein laila, Adonai tzvaot shemo. El chai vekayam tamid imloch aleinu leolam vaed, Baruch ata Adonai, hama'ariv aravim. Ahavat olam, Beit Sir me menu the Ola Mim Baruch Atadonai O Heva Mo Israel Shema. All this we hold to be true and sure. You alone are our God, there is none else, and we are Israel, your people. You are our sovereign, you deliver us from the hands of oppressors and save us from the fists of tyrants. You do wonders without number, marvels that surpass our understanding. You give us our life. By your help, we survive all who seek our destruction. You did wonders for us in the land of Egypt, miracles and marvels in the land of Pharaoh. You led your people Israel out forever to serve you in freedom. When your children witnessed your power, they extolled you and gave you thanks. Willingly, they enthroned you, full of joy. Moses, Miriam, all of Israel sang this song.
Raise us up, O Sovereign, to life renewed. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with your good counsel. And for your namesake, be our help. Shield us from hatred and plague. Keep us from war and famine and anguish. Subdue our inclination to evil. O God, our guardian and helper, our gracious and merciful Sovereign, give us refuge in the shadow of your wings. Guard our coming and our going, that now and always we may have life and peace. Praised are you, Adonai, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people Israel, and over Jerusalem. <laughs> Eat 
I think everyone has heard the story of the man who's standing on his roof in a flood. And he says, God, send me a miracle, rescue me, O oh God. And first comes by the truck and says, get in. And then comes by the boat and then comes by the helicopter. And when the man drowns, he gets to God and says, God, where was my miracle? And God says, I sent you three. Where were you? We have prayed for more than 130 days, Matir Asurim, for the release of captives, for the rescue of captives. And what kind of people would we be if we did not turn our hearts now to a moment of gratitude and thankfulness and to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the rescue of Fernando Marman. Thank you, God, for the rescue of Luis Har. Baruch Aronai, Elohim Melchalam. Matir Asurim, blessed are you, Adonai, our God. You rule the universe. You free the captive. We continue to pray for freedom. We continue to pray for healing. Tonight, we pray for the healing of Chana Bat Gittel, Sima Bat Gittel, Harav Yehuda ben Michael the Rezel, Gloria Wunder, Rezel Bat Leah, Chaya Sara Bat Shindel Rezel the Yosef Zelik, Don Colt, Sarah Chana bat Chaya Devorah v'Zechel, Shira bat Miriam v'Avraham, Chaya Elisheva bat Leah Chana v'Gershon, Hudi Charendoff, Bracha bat Gevura v'Raphael, Janely Rissover, Sue Devor, Chana Miriam bat Semach, our cantorial and rabbinical students studying in Jerusalem at the Hebrew Union College, our alumni Shin Shanim, the wounded soldiers and civilians of Israel, and the hostages, no matter where they may be, no matter what state they may be in. We pray for their healing. We pray for their redemption. Are there names to be added to our prayer for healing this evening?
Bless those in need of healing with refua shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. Be This week, we have one of those amazing moments of cosmic synergy, when the world outside of our window and the world inside of our scroll line up perfectly and give nerds like me, who are paying just a little too much attention, quite a thrill. And I am, of course, speaking about the vital Torah portion we read this week, Truma, and the once pagan, then Catholic, and now entirely secular and capitalistic Valentine's Day. <laughs> Valentine's Day, it is theorized, began as a Roman holiday around this time of year called the Lupercalia. It was the Brotherhood of the Wolf Festival, a pastoral holiday rooted in health and fertility with sacrifices to the various pagan gods of Rome, especially Pan, and the celebration of the mythological origin of the city. Romulus and Remus, famously the twin founders of Rome, raised by a wolf in a nearby cave. And it was to there, that very cave, that the citizens of Rome would race nude and slap each other with freshly cut leather thongs <laughs> that they might become pregnant in the coming year. Famously, Julius Caesar denied himself the kingship of Rome on Lupercalia. And in the Shakespearean tragedy, also named Julius Caesar, our very first scene, act one, scene one, begins that very festival day. Hundreds of years later, in the third century, still in Rome, a Roman priest named Valentine would be killed by the Romans and sainted by the early Catholic Church. And there are two other saints, also named Valentine, also Catholic priests, who were murdered and martyred by the Romans. And at least one of them, maybe two, were killed on the 14th of February, which then became the Feast of St. Valentine, a holiday that the church placed right on top of that Roman pagan wolf fertility festival because that's what the church did with its holidays in order to help its pagan converts acculturate to their new Catholic faith. And nearly 1,500 years later, in mid-1800s Victorian England, Valentine's Day, as it became known, was already the holiday we recognize today one that was concerned with romantic love and poetry and the exchanging of chocolate and flowers and cards, much more so than celebrating the life and death of a Catholic saint. And these very many numerous iconic cards all featured a very familiar face, a sweet face, an angelic face, a round, Cupid face, holding winged, uh, winged arrows, sometimes with a heart, and carrying his bow. And what do you call him? A cherub. a cherub. And thank you all for being so patient. Because at long last, with the use of that word cherub, we are finally leaving behind the pagan and the Catholic and the capitalist and re-entering the world of Torah, and this week's parsha, Truma. So in this week's Torah portion, God asks the Israelites to bring gifts of the heart to help Moses in the construction of the Mishkan, 
And as part of God's instruction to the Israelites, there is a very detailed series of designs for building the famed Ark of the Covenant, the golden box that will carry the commandments that Moses has brought down from Sinai. And on top of that Ark, on the lid which covers it, there is a very special adornment. We see it in Exodus 25, verse 18. Make two cherubim of gold. Make them of hammered work. Place them at the two ends on this cover. And while the Torah is incredibly detailed in describing how you place the cherubim on top of the ark, where they face, how you should arrange their wings, even stating that from between their wings, I will continue to give you meets vote, that God's very presence will live between the wings of these cherubim. What a cherub is and what it looks like besides the fact that it has wings, is a mystery. And as with all mysteries, the best way to solve a mystery in the Torah is to go around looking for a little bit of context. And looking through all the different verses of the Torah where cherubim are mentioned, we see that the very first mention of them comes in the book of Genesis. At the very moment that Adam and Eve are exiled from the garden and placed east of Eden, the Torah says, God placed down cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way and it guarded the path to the tree of life and chapter and book. Oh, that was not particularly helpful. I mean, it was somewhat helpful. We now know that at least that the Torah is kind of putting cherubim in this semi-divine category of angelic-ish being. It's a guardian. It guards the tree of life. It is next to an ever-flaming, ever-burning sword. That probably implies it's not a person. It probably implies it's not an animal. It might be a force of nature, but that seems unlikely from context. Okay, maybe it can use a sword, maybe it has hands. We don't know. Context gives us nothing. It does not help us in any way, shape, or form to describe the creature that the rest of the Torah very clearly thinks we understand. Why do you think the Torah thinks that? Well, here's the funny thing. Because our, understood, our ancestors understood exactly what a cherub was. The Torah doesn't feel the need to explain what it looks like or what it is because it's part of the vocabulary of the ancient world. When something is a major part of your collective vocabulary, you don't need to describe it, even if it's a very specific thing. Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe you think that's odd. So let's play a game. Who here, I'm, I want you to raise your hand, has ever owned any method for playing a movie or a music piece in your home? Anything that has ever played a movie or played music in your home? Okay. VHS. Raise your hand if you ever had a VHS. A VCR. A, a Blu-ray. A DVD. A vinyl record. A CD. A cassette tape. I've never seen an eight track, but I know they existed. <laughs> okay. Now, how many generations apart do we need to be for someone in this very room, I see three of them, maybe more, to have absolutely no idea what those things are, what they are called, or what they do? How many years? 10, 15, maybe? But in the time when those things were a popular technology, when the majority of the people around the world knew exactly what it is, you don't need to clarify. You can just say, oh, I'm gonna go get my portable CD player. You don't need to say, which is a circle that opens and you place a metallic disc inside of it and then you close it and then it plays music for you. You don't need to say that because people know what it is. But today, if I gave the growing generation under eight a portable CD player, what is it? How does it work? What does it do? To describe a cherub then in the ancient world, it's unnecessary. Everyone already knows what it looks like. 
Otherwise, the Torah, which is being hyper-specific in this time and place, would take the time and energy to explain it. Now, would you like to hear the next fascinating thing? We actually can see the very moment that this knowledge gets lost. The prophet Ezekiel is born in the Babylonian exile era. He's born right before, but he's sent into exile with King Jehoiachin, who is the final king of Judah. So we're talking somewhere in the year 587 before the Common Era. And Ezekiel, as a prophet, has wild, crazy visions. Because the thing that he is primarily trying to describe is simultaneously the throne of God and the chariot of God. It is something that doesn't exist in the world. It only exists in heaven, in visions, in a mind's eye. And it's an impossible structure that is simultaneously a war machine, the literal court of a king, and the seat of God. And as he attempts to describe it, he also tries to describe the creatures and beings which surround it and attend to it. And in a shocking moment of prophecy, Ezekiel takes the time to in detail describe a cherub. And if you want to know what he says, come to Torah study tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'll tell you. The point is, I'm not going to tell you tonight. I'm really not. <laughs> the point tonight is not the description that Ezekiel gives. It's that he needs to describe it at all. If in his own generation, people understood what a cherub looked like, he wouldn't need to spend the vital time explaining the vision of prophecy that he received. Because if everyone around him had the cultural context for the object, like say, that portable CD player, you don't need to describe it in detail. It's only because by 587, people no longer know what a cherub looks like, that Ezekiel has to spend the time describing it. Which means that somewhere between this verse of the Torah, somewhere in this section of Exodus, and the destruction of the first temple, the word lost its cultural context. What was once known became a mystery and we see it happen inside the time frame of our own sacred texts. And that is fascinating. Except, of course, that its story doesn't end there. The word cherub then regains cultural context. Because when I say the word cherub today, what pops into your head is a cute little figure dressed from Valentine's Day or the various little angel boys flying around a Renaissance painting. But I promise you, the creature on top of the ark, described in the Torah, does not look anything like something you would find on the cover of a box of chocolates, <laughs> unless you are buying some really wild chocolates. <laughs> the world changes. Valentine's Day changed over the course of a 1,000 plus years to go from a pagan wolf holiday to a secular love holiday, and it spent a good chunk of time being a Catholic holiday in the middle. The cherub transformed from being something that everyone who knew knew to being someone that no one can possibly describe, and today is a dainty little Cupid. I want you to understand that for a moment. The world changes so much that words lose and transform their meaning, sometimes within a lifetime and sometimes within an epoch. <coughs> and yet, the Jewish people are still here. We are still here through it all. And we were there for every moment, every iteration of this story from the founding of Valentine's Day in Rome, to its transformation, to its little pink bow today. 
We were there for every moment of the cherub, from its common knowledge to its deepest mystery. And if you need to draw strength from anything, for anything this week, let it be that thought that while the world may change, through it all, we are still here. Am Yisrael Chai, Shabbat Shalom. We rise for the words of Aleinu. <clears throat> One thirty-nine. Aleinu <laughs> The Goraleinu kechu amonam, v'anachnu korim u'mishtachavim u'modim lifnei melech malchei hamlachim hakadosh baruchu shehu no teshamayim ve'yosed aretz u'moshav yagarol b'ashamayim imal u'shchina tuzo u'shchina tuzo b'gafe mero. I would invite our mourners to remain standing as everyone else is seated, if only for a moment. We see you and acknowledge you. We are here for you. In this time of sacred memory, we recall the lives of Bella Albright, Harry Alexander, Samuel Bacher, Tilly Baker, Esther Biederman, Max Berenstein, William Byrne, Ruth Brown, Celia Cooper, Telma Dunkelman, Henry Faber, Ruth Feinberg, William Feldstein, Joseph Florence, Johanna Frankel, Lena Frankel, Rose Friedman, Sybil Geller, Ella Greenholtz, George Gruber, Eva Harris, Margaret Hart, Harry Hersheran, Louis Kane, Ruth Kerpernek, Pearl Krugel, Bella Leakin, Max Levine, Molly Lichtenberg, Anne Lokash, Harry Mandel, Boris Mesper, Melanie Miller, David Pace, Francis Pearl, Earl Pullen, Louis Rapp, Ethel Resnick, Eve Richler, Al Rosen, Selena Ro Rosenthal, Alan Rossman, County Rothstein, Teresa Sapira, Sarah Schwartz, Nathan Shapiro, William Scheuchet, Louis Shore, Sarah Smith, Aaron Sokalski, Melvin Soren, Samuel Stanway, Clara Stein, Rose Strouch, Dorothy Sugarman, Erwin Taub, Horace Toker, Harris Toker, Avram Waldman, Joseph Warsh, Charlotte Wilson, Jonathan Wolf, Herbert Wolfson. And we recall, too, those who have died most recently and their families are in the period of Shloshim, Gabor Apor, Herbert Ronald Binder, Wilfred Kaplan, Louis DeVore, Rosemary Goldhar, Reva Henry, Arnold Sheldon Herrer, Jim Letterman, Judith Loeb Cohen, Melanie Sagman, Joel Sears, Gertrude Selick, Shirley Tesler, William Sam Warner, and the fallen soldiers of Israel. It is with sadness we report the passing of our member, Mildred Ulster, Zichonan Livracha, mother of Diane, Joel, Richard, and Penny. For information about the funeral, please check the Benjamin's website after Shabbat. Are there names to be added to our memorial this evening? Trudy 
as one, we rise to support our mourners and praise God's holy name. Kadish Yatom, page 142. Amen. 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 Eat Barach, Vayish Tabach, Vayit Paar, Vayit Romam, Vayit Nase, Vayit Adar, Vayit Ale, Vayit Alal, Shmei de Kutisha, Brichu, Leela, Min Kol Birchata, Vashirata, Tush Bechata, Venechamata, Da Amiran Beama, Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vechaim, Alenu Veal Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. Ose Shalom, Vim Romav, Huya Se Shalom, Alenu Veal Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved amongst us and our people Israel and all lands near and far. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Found on page 439. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kichanu B'mitzvotav Piratav Anu V'Shabbat Kodcho B'Yahava Uvratzon Hinchilanu Zikaron L'Mahasev Reishit Yehu yom tehila, let me cry, Kodesh, Zeichel letziat mitzrayim. Kivanu v'acharta, v'yotanu kidashta, mikol ha'amim. V'shabat kodshecha, b'yahava. Amen. Amen.